His superiors, turning a deaf ear to his suggestions, told him that this was an impossible dream. Mr. Kusmal, a German medical authority, had been the first to try looking inside the stomach in 1868. Kusmal had seen a sword swallower swallowing a sable in the street, when the idea of using a mirror in the tip of a metallic tube to observe the stomach from the inside came to him. The metallic tube, called a gastroendoscope, had an interior mirror and was introduced into the esophagus to look into the stomach, but caused patients enormous pain. The metallic tube could perforate the esophagus and in some cases even cause the patient's death. After many accidents, the idea of looking inside the stomach was abandoned worldwide. After finishing his work at the hospital, Dr. Uji rushed to Olympus, where, during the day, Mr. Sugiura developed microscopes. At night, he worked on the development of the gastro camera. This is one draft of the blueprint, which took more than a month to develop. Dr. Uji said that the most important thing was to be careful not to cause injuries in the patient's bodies. They gathered all of the camera's components inside a tube barely 12 millimeters in diameter, much thinner than the esophagus. This was done four years after the war, at a time when food was still scarce. Would these men be able to create a high precision instrument? The gastro camera development project had begun with the clear objective of developing the first gastro camera in the world. Dr. Uji and Mr. Sukaumi and Sukiura worked in their free time and even used their own salaries to purchase the required parts, making an effort to reduce the camera's size as much as possible. The width of the film had to be equal to or less than six millimeters. Mr. Sukaumi made a special apparatus to cut 35 millimeter film into six millimeter strips. The camera's lens was only two and a half millimeters in diameter. The next task was to find a way to ensure extremely clear focus. Mr. Sukiura asked one of the Olympus employees to do the work and he had the lens ready in a month. There was one piece, however, that they simply could not get. A five millimeter diameter lamp, which would be used to eliminate darkness in the interior of the stomach. Mr. Sukiyura heard about a factory called Life, where there was an expert who accepted special orders. and Mr. Sukiyura decided to visit him. The expert was a young man named Masato Maruyama, just 23 years old. Mr. Sukiyura visited him and verified that Mr. Maruyama was capable of manufacturing what he needed. Mr. Sukiyura was delighted and told Mr. Maruyama that his lamps would save many lives. Mr. Maruyama started working on the request but soon realized that Mr. Sukiyura wanted nothing less than a perfect solution. However, to create a small lamp with very high intensity was extremely difficult. After a month of hard work, Mr. Maruyama had an idea. He decided to create a double filament in order to double the electric current. Immediately upon testing it, he said, there was a blinding light. <sighs> Meanwhile, Dr. Uji continued to attend to his cancer patients to whom he could no longer offer much hope. 
the delay in the development of the gastro camera was causing him a great deal of anxiety. Mr. Sukiyura and Sukaumi, witnessing Dr. Uji's frustration, decided not to wait any longer and to use all of the pieces that had been assembled so far in order to make the prototype as soon as possible. In order to avoid any organ damage, they decided to gather all of the components in a soft vinyl tube instead of a metallic tube. Based on the manufacturing experience of high-precision instruments, Mr. Sukaumi spent long nights working on the prototype. Four months after beginning the project, the prototype was ready. They had placed all of the necessary pieces at one end of the 12 mm tube. The small lamp only lasted a short period of time but the prototype was finally ready for a practical test. The men who had developed the first gastro camera were in their early 30s. And on that day, the dream of those who suffered the horrors of war had been realized to save many human lives. From that day forward, the gastro camera was recognized worldwide and many physicians from numerous countries came to Japan to learn how to use it. Since the development of that first gastro camera, endoscopes have continuously evolved and they now include optical fiber and video, but their objective has always been to detect cancer in its early stages. In 1949, in the middle of a raging typhoon, a young doctor and a technician talked about their dream of developing the first gastro camera. This conversation changed the diagnosis of cancer worldwide. Very important, Dr. Hosono. The video we just saw was very interesting. Who remember when we broadcasted this Project X program? We probably shall broadcast it again in the future. Dr. Hosono, could you explain to our audience what advances there have been after more than half a century in the area of gastro camera and endoscopy? Well, there have been important advances, as Dr. Murasaka mentioned before. Well, previously, the images, images were black and white, and then they changed to color, and afterwards they introduced the optical fiber that allowed to see much more defined images from the interior of the human body than the conventional cable used before, which is called fiber optic endoscopes. With this equipment, doctors can examine inserting optical fiber images in 1985, video endoscope era started. Through this, the examined, through this, the examined organ images can be seen in high-resolution monitors. This system is known as ABIS-1. Also, the use of laser beam, together with endoscopes, brought a great change in 2002. Olympus Company which participated in the gastro camera development half a century ago, introduced the latest advance with the first endoscope system of high vision and high resolution, so-called first high vision and high definition system. This system is called Abyss Excel. Abyss Excel. 